21st Gene Key. A noble life. Programming partner, 48th Gene Key. Coden Ring, the Ring of Humanity. 10, 17, 21, 25, 38, 51. Physiology, lungs. Amino acid, arginine. The 21st Shadow, control. The demise of hierarchy. One of the major issues to plague human beings and the cause of enormous conflict and violation of basic human rights is the issue of control. All control is rooted entirely in a single theme, territory. As we shall see, there are various different ways in which we can understand territory. The first territory is yourself the physical, emotional, and intellectual confines of your own being and the boundary of your aura. If we extend that theme, you might view your relationships and families as another form of territory. In turn, your home and land is obviously a further extension of your family territory. Then there is your entire community or race, the outer territory of which is made up of your nation. Finally, there is the Earth itself, which forms the current territory of all human beings. This constitutes a great deal of territory, which taken together creates the potential for a lot of human conflict rooted in control. Another way of looking at territory is to view your life as territory and the events of your life as the aspects within that territory that you wish to control. The 21st shadow certainly views life like this, and it does so at a deep genetic and unconscious level, because humanity still operates collectively at the shadow frequency. We are used to dividing life up into millions of individual territories and trying to control them. When you consider that we are really a single unified organism, this seems rather a ridiculous way to behave but it is nonetheless how the world works. At the shadow frequency, everyone is a victim. The controllers are victims of their need to remain in control, and the controlled are the victims of the controllers. Wherever you find the 21st shadow, you will find someone either too weak to control anything at all, or someone with a deep-seated need to control everything in their environment. In the past, control was about resources and food, and food depended on maintaining and defending your territory. In the modern world, however, the battlefield has changed even though the genetic dynamic has not. Today, the battleground is money, and this 21st shadow has much to do with power and money. At the shadow frequency, if you have money, it appears that you also have power. However, at the gift level and beyond, we shall see that true power has nothing to do with money. Control is based on tightness and fear. It creates tension and boundaries throughout all our environments. Even more crucially, it creates the notion of hierarchy because there are those who control and those who are controlled. In a contorted kind of way, this relationship between the controllers and the controlled can actually work quite well. It is the foundation of the idea of classes and castes, and in its ideal form, it became the responsibility of the upper classes to feed and protect the lower classes. This has been the way most societies on our planet have functioned for millennia, and the greater part of the world still operates in this old way. It is the basis of our notion of royalty and ancestral lineages in families. It is only fairly recently that these archaic systems have really been questioned and are gradually losing their control and power. One of the manifestations of this decline of hierarchical control has been the rise of the middle class in the Western world, However, the new rise of the middle classes does not offer a great deal more than the old system. It creates just as many problems. 
Families are now more cut off from each other than ever, and we have a world of every family for itself. The urge to control has simply shifted venues. Control now operates most powerfully through capitalism. The issue of control is the issue of patriarchy. Patriarchal forms of government are the bedrock of our society, from politics to education to business. Most of those who are in control are only interested in power and money, and those who are not interested in power or money are generally too submissive to take any action. Apart from a few valiant individuals with true vision, the positions of true power on our planet are filled by those following personal agendas. The 21st shadow makes it seem as though you simply cannot defeat the patriarchal system. So most people's true visions for a better world are choked before they are given a chance. However, the first ripples of a new frequency are emerging in the world. As those with the 21st gift find positions of power, the balance will begin to shift because the higher frequencies of this gene key are not interested in power or money or control, despite having a gift for all three. They are really interested in serving community. Even more than this, they have the courage to enact their visions and that will make all the difference. There are many misunderstandings about the issue of control and power. There will always be people who are naturally gifted leaders, but at the higher frequencies, they see leadership as service, which means that those who serve with them or under them are never really under them. Rather, they are working alongside them. The problem with the old system is not the model, but the frequency of the people in the model. The moment a system has everyone in exactly the right place, it no longer is patriarchal or matriarchal. It actually becomes synarchical. Synarchy is a model in which all people are equal, but some still have more authority than others. This authority, however, is based upon frequency rather than fear. The reason that synarchy succeeds where hierarchy cannot is that every person in a synarchy is fulfilled by their role, regardless of how much or how little responsibility it carries. For a fuller description of such a model, you can listen to the 44th Gene Key. The ultimate root of territorial divisions across our planet is distrust in life itself. This is the real human disease. Territory and control through power and money are simply the manifestations of this disease. The programming partner of the 21st shadow is the 48th shadow of inadequacy, which underpins all this fear of losing control of your territory. We simply do not yet know that we are a single entity. When the time comes that we see our true nature as a collective holistic human family, the need to control life will cease. Ultimately, the only ones who will be given positions of control will be those who have given up being in control. Those people are our future leaders in business, in government, and at all levels of human society. Those of us who continue to try and hold tight control over our territories and others' lives will eventually find that we are fighting only ourselves repressive nature, submissive. All repressive natures are based upon the denial of personal power. Through the 21st shadow, this shows up as submission. These people let others remain in control without asserting their own authority. Added to this, the repressive nature has a tendency to defer control to life itself therefore not assuming responsibility for the direction in which it takes them. There is a fine line between surrendering to what life brings and influencing the path of one's own destiny. These people unconsciously blame life for whatever happens to them, closing down the center of their willpower. The true nature of the 21st gift is to control and manage situations 
but the submissive side of this shadow is afraid of being in control since it means they alone are accountable for their actions and potential success or failure. These people would rather not participate in life at all. They often masquerade as being laid back. However, the reality is that such people are hiding from their true responsibility. Reactive nature, controlling. The other side of the 21st shadow is the acute need for control. These are the people we sometimes label as control freaks. Their anger is so tightly coiled that they cannot allow any part of their environment to escape their control. As the repressed nature is loose, so the reactive nature is tight. These people cannot handle change unless they have instigated it. If others transgress the confines of their deeply controlled lives, all their pent-up tension and anger is likely to be detonated. Such a nature strives to maintain control over others through hierarchical dominance or by taking the moral high ground. Unfortunately, such sustained insistence on control takes a great toll on your body and in particular on your heart. These are the kind of people who can only be humbled by a deep physical or emotional crisis, and because of their inability to let go, they often meet such crises in life. The 21st gift, authority. The authority of submission. The gift of authority is a gift that is innate. If you have the 21st gift in your hologenetic profile, and you speak and act from your heart, you will inspire loyalty in others wherever you go. Authority is the true vibration of this 21st gene key when it has found that delicate balance between allowing things to go their own way and assuming control of the way things are going. Authority is a frequency that is determined by intent if you assert authority through the hierarchical base of the 21st shadow, then you rule through control and fear, which never inspires true loyalty. In such cases, the people around you may appear loyal, but given the right circumstances, they will quickly and easily transfer their loyalties elsewhere. True loyalty can only be maintained when the frequency of love outweighs the frequency of fear. Such people are given authority by others, and this is the real meaning of authority. Authority cannot be asserted through will. It can only be afforded through trust. Authority is a phenomenon within the auric field that takes place between one individual and another or between an individual and a group. True authority unites rather than controls. This can be understood well by the archetype of the master and the servant, which is the bedrock of our societies. Some of the deepest relationships are formed between one person in a position of authority and another in a position that appears to be submissive. However, if both parties in such relationships are as deeply in service as each other, then their relationship transcends its social stereotype of dominance and submission. In order for such relationships to work, both parties must be equally in service to the other. If this is the case, the relationship can be mutually beneficial and potentially very powerful. This relationship between authority and submission is the relationship between yin and yang, between the male and female energies throughout our universe. The male polarity represents authority and the female represents the subject or servant of that authority. Despite the fact that this relationship has established itself culturally across most human societies, it has little to do with men and women. Women can equally be the authority and men the servants. It is just the difference between matriarchy and patriarchy, but neither works unless the intent at the root of the relationship is pure. If the female side is too submissive, then the male side will be too controlling and vice versa. 
Any imbalance in this kind of relationship is a manifestation of the shadow aspect of this 21st gene key. There can be no need for power or resentment from either side. This balancing of the archetypes is a hallmark of the higher frequency of the 21st gift. You will find that all relationships play out this same drama. It is the core relationship between parent and child, husband and wife, employer and employee. The beauty and magic of the 21st gift occurs when both sides of the relationship surrender to each other. When the authority becomes the servant and the servant becomes the authority, then the relationship really hums with power. On the outer plane, such a relationship may appear to be one-sided, but on the inner plane, the balance of power is reversed. Only when this happens does the real meaning of authority become clear. In large groups, communities, companies, and even armies, if the authority figure represents and connects with all their subordinates, they will inspire the kind of loyalty that strongly binds the group. This kind of leadership is very different from that of the 7th or 31st Gene Keys, which is based upon the ability to completely let go of all control and trust the collective spirit of the group to make its own decisions. In the case of the 21st Gift, a pact is made that one person will become the decision maker for the group, and this person is thus responsible for the entire group. There are many different styles of leadership within the human genetic matrix. Whereas the 31st gift represents the voice of the group and the 7th gift represents the heart of the group, the 21st gift represents the will of the group. Thus, these people are designed to handle more responsibility than other human beings, since their will directly affects all those in submission to them the key lies in the willingness of those in submission to be represented by the one who is chosen to be the authority. As has been shown, when these relationships work at a high enough frequency, the one in authority simply becomes the conduit of the will of his or her followers. When that happens, transcendence occurs. Such relationships are founded upon kinship rather than kingship. The authority figures, as we shall see at the very highest frequencies, must remain continually in communion with those below them in the hierarchy. Only when this merging and transcending of cultural stereotypes occurs, can the highest spirit incarnate into a human group. This 21st gene key can be further understood when seen in the context of its wider genetic family or codon ring. As part of the ring of humanity, it forms an integral aspect of all human wounding. The sacred wound at the heart of humanity and the reason for all of our suffering can be unlocked by the gene keys that make up the ring of humanity. Hierarchy is one of the oldest human wounds and like each aspect of our suffering, it can only be healed by love. To activate the higher frequencies within this gene key, you must have great courage. It takes a powerful human being to surrender completely to another, whether through authority or submission. The fact is that surrender makes authority submissive and submission authoritative, which is precisely what heals the wound and brings an end to hierarchy and control. The 21st city, Valor, the new age of chivalry. In the 21st gift, we saw that true authority based on service inspires loyalty. At the highest level of consciousness, this coupling of love and power gives way to a great and peerless ideal, the ideal of valor. We tend to associate the word valor with courage particularly the courage shown by soldiers during battle. Although there is some truth to this image, the use of the word valor as a Siddic aspect of consciousness goes far beyond the idea of courage in the face of adversity. 
Vala is the highest frequency of the 21st gene key. It is a living energy field released into the world through a particular chemical signature within your genetics. Vala is the byproduct of another potent word, nobility. To understand nobility is to dive into the realm of human destiny. In the social history of humanity and in our collective unconscious, there has persisted an image of a royal human being the king or queen, the emperor or empress, the symbol of the highest potential within man and woman. Nobility is the quality usually associated with royalty or genetic pedigree, although down through the ages, our human attempts to bestow such projections on certain personages has usually been shown severely wanting. Nobility, we have discovered, has little to do with breeding and much more to do with character. Indeed, most of our heroic myths center on this notion of human nobility and valor. Valor then can be understood as nobility in action. It contains virtue, wisdom, love, courage, and above all, sacrifice. A truly valorous deed is an act of absolute self-surrender in which you lay your entire being on the line for a higher ideal. In our history books, this may have been recorded as dying for king and country, but in the language of the Siddhis, it is really about dying into a divine ideal. At the shadow level, the need to control fosters fear and reaction in others. At the gift level, authority inspires loyalty. At the Siddic level, valor invokes communion. There is a deep genetic connection between the 45th Siddhi of communion and the 21st Siddhi of valor. Communion is about merging your individual being into a higher collective being, and this is precisely what happens through the frequency of valor. Valor need not even act. It is a vibration of such intensity that it makes the hearts of others weep. It is the recognition of true nobility in another and the realization that the other is your own mirror. As an aspect of the ring of humanity, we see that all human beings have this higher recognition as their final destiny. No matter who you are or what kind of life you lead, at certain points in your life, you are given the opportunity to act with valor. These moments are mythic moments and the script of your future life hinges upon them. To act with valor is to enter a higher world. Valor is the first great manifestation of the breakdown of the resistance between the opposite poles within relationships. It is the bowing of one being to the nobility within another. Mystically speaking, it is represented by the fourth initiation of matrimony, see the 22nd gene key, in which the quality of valor actually courts annihilation through its self-sacrifice to another being. It is the absolute surrender of control into your hierarchical role. This means that socially you surrender to your position and mystically you surrender to your karma. Valor is the absolute courage and love of seeing the divine reflection within the face of another, no matter how unpleasant that other may appear to be. As an archetype, valor signifies the ending of all karma, even though the states preceding it often carry a great deal of karma. Valor must be forged on the anvil of life. You have to realize that no matter how muddy the waters you find yourself in, your pure nature can never be soiled. If the 21st gene key is a part of your personal hologenic profile, the chances are you will need to get your hands dirty before you can understand this paradox. To be a master, that is, a being who has attained realization through this city, you must lead by example. You have to know the absolute horrors of living within the most tightly controlled hierarchical situations. 
you have to understand a human need for control and the depths of your own fear of losing control. You have to be tested by the forces that will not relinquish control and you have to continually be subjected to external controls. Once you see that no external form of control can rob you of your true nobility, this city of valor will finally dawn deep inside your DNA. The being that has attained realization through this city never feels like an authority figure, even though they may be. These rare people will commune with you as a friend, despite the exquisite fragrance of their state of consciousness. It is this very humbling quality within the city of Valor that creates such deep levels of human communion. Even though the 21st city may be incredibly humble and friendly, it also packs a serious punch when threatened by the forces of fear. This is the energy field of true knighthood, symbolized by the courageous and chivalrous acts of all great heroes and heroines. These forces will fight for the highest of ideals and hold that ideal for all those who follow them. Those with this city will gladly die for, and as an example of the highest ideal, the ideal of communion between all beings. The lives of such people become myths, often because of the sacrificial nature of their deaths. Even so, awakening through this city does not obviously foreshadow such a death. It is simply symbolic of the highest expression of this 21st gene key. With the advent of the 55th gene key and its reawakening of the spirit of romance within humanity, this 21st city is actually ushering in a new myth and a new age of chivalry. The essence of valor is to be found in the symbol of the male pole surrendering to the female pole. The programming partner of the 21st city is the 48th city of wisdom, which is one of the great archetypes of the divine feminine. Valor, therefore, represents the surrender of control, symbolized by man, to trust, symbolized by woman. This surrender results in the absolute annihilation of the male force by the female force, an ancient mythic enactment contained in many ancient creation myths. This surrender of the male into the female creates a reversal of roles and poles, and thus the communion is fulfilled. Ironically, it is through this divine coupling that the male force is truly empowered through its opposite. In other words, the male force is knighted and empowered only through its surrender to the female. It is important to understand that this imagery is an internal truth rather than a literal representation of man and woman. The power of valor could thus be summarized as the courage and love that must be found within the lower self to die into the unknown world of the higher self.